welcome back to Build Toon Race. You guessed it, we're back on Salty again. We're on a whole bunch of things. I actually picked up a new hood. That was a great Facebook Marketplace find, or actually it was just a Facebook group find. Posted I need a hood like months ago. Try to get a hood, things don't work out with who I was trying to buy the hood through, getting it shipped here and all that stuff. So I bought this used one. It's got a wrap on it, fiberglass unit. Got to fill in some holes and end up Zeus it, but it is extended to the windshield hood. Big old cowl. Not sure I love how big the cowl is, but this thing is, like I said in the last video, getting a big old intake on it. So maybe it'll work out. If not, we can always swap hoods easy enough. I've been over here working on a few other things. We were actually mocking up the dash yesterday and I got all my LJB Motorsports, well, not all of them, two of my LJB Motorsports mounts mounted up in the car. This is for the Dominator, that's for the race pack, and then this one will be for the EGT module. I was actually gonna go flat with them, but uh, I wanna retain the glove box. So in retaining the glove box, nice thing is with these little notches, you can just roll them back. They'll be right there. These little mounts will actually be for sale soon. I'll drop a link below on LJB Motorsports. The website's getting worked on and you should be able to purchase those soon. Super sweet, super simple. Joey actually helped me design these for these cars. We're like, hey, we should offer those. So I'm gonna help him get those out on the internet, get them for sale and all that type of stuff. Another thing I've been working on is I ordered some of these aluminum bungs here, welded it there. I got a couple tabs I've made. They're gonna weld it like right there, come up there. So just a couple little things, but in the last video we talked about with the intercooler is how I needed to mount it. I had that flat plate in there for now, but I need to be able to mount it. So I'm gonna put a square tube in there like that, which would look terrible, or be able to cut, bend, and notch my own tubing here at the house. So I actually went and got this cheap little Harbor Freight tube notcher, uh, and then I added my drill to it. This is a piece of one inch molly. It goes up, it swings, has angles, and then I also, I was looking online, I was like, a lot of people were saying, you know, you could use the cheap like uh, pipe bender from Harbor Freight to bend tubing. It'll kink it and you gotta modify and all this crap. I found this thing called the affordable bender, did a whole bunch of hours of research trying to figure out where to get it, how to get it. And then I found this one from Speedway Motors that looks just like the affordable bender, but uh, it was actually on sale. Had all five dies, so all the way from like inch to inch and three quarter, inch and five eighths, inch and a half. Uh, inch and a quarter. It comes with a bunch of dies. I have those over there in a box, but right now I have, I assembled it with the one inch tube, which is what's over there in the pipe notcher. Uh, what's over there in the tube notcher. So there is the one inch die. It's actually pretty nice. It has this little um, clamp that holds the tube in there nice tight against the die. And then it comes in here. It bends to about a 90. I haven't used it yet, but I'm gonna use this on trying to make the tube that goes across and that will eventually hold the intercooler. So another cross brace in the car, similar to what that rectangular tube is, but it'll be nice and round and a one inch tube. I'm gonna start out today by throwing a notch on here, trying out the bender for the first time and then trying to figure out how to put that bar in there. I went and found an inch and five eighths full saw to, to match up with the inch and five eighths main rail over there. So we're gonna uh, give it a try. I'll probably have to put the camera down just because this thing's gonna be quite aggressive. Let me, uh, let me start notching this thing and I'll let you guys know how it goes. As you guys see, it's starting to work pretty decent. One thing I will say though is not having a consistent speed on this. It's kind of making it difficult trying to work the trigger and then the low and high speed. If you could almost set this to a certain speed and work it in, that'd probably be better, but it's, uh, it's doing its job. It's making, making its way through it. Well, after, after finding the right speed, I think we got it there. I'm going to peel it out of here and, you know, clean it up. But honestly, not bad. Not ideal with the whole drill. And I think my drill's a little old. Could use probably a better one. But for the most part, looks like it did a pretty decent job. First notch done. Not too bad, I don't think. It is slightly off the of center. I don't know if I'll be able to get it to focus in for you guys. Yeah, a little bit. Not, not too bad, just slightly off. But if you bring it over here and match it up to this pipe, match it up to this tube, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's pretty gosh dang decent. Initial review of the like 50 some dollar Harbor Freight tube notcher. Not bad, gets the job done. Let's check out the tube bender. Since this is my first time using this bender, I'm not exactly sure how far I should stick this out or line it up with the edge or whatever. So I'm just going to, you know, bend this here 
kind of a test spin. Hopefully I can make it work. If I end up messing up this pipe, I got another one. But first time use of most benders, you kind of have to just do a little bend, put it back in, keep bending until it gets where you want. Uh, I was noticing some people online, they've made a bunch of bends, like lines here, out here, to kind of give them a reference of where they end up. I'm just trying to sink this bar about two inches down so then the uh, intercooler sits kind of flush with the lower bars. I really don't want to sit lower then because I don't want to hit it when driving and all that type of stuff, which is for all kind of protect it, but still I don't want it too low to where I could catch uh, that bar with the front end. So I'm going to uh, just bend it a little bit and we'll see where we get. Seems to be doing a pretty decent job. I'm just trying to look and see and get an idea about like maybe a two inch drop, uh, inch and five eighths drop from the notch here to the bottom of the tube here. It is a pretty big die as far as the size of the radius goes. So it uh, takes up some room to bend it. I also picked up one of these little digital angle finders. So I can zero it off the here. There we go, zero. And then I can take and put it right here. So I can kind of get an idea of how many degrees I'm bending it, so then I can replicate it on the other side. So I just pulled it out, and honestly it looks pretty decent. It's a nice smooth bend, it's nothing crazy, I haven't went to a crazy end, but as you guys can see that's kind of a little step down I'm looking for. So I'm going to set it in the car and kind of see where I'm at. So I'm kind of come up something like that. I mean that looks pretty pretty dang good. It's not going to be the easiest to figure out the exact bend to get it to line up here. I kind of have to work this side backwards uh, and the length and then figure out where the bend started and where it stops and all that and then hopefully I can predict it over here. Hopefully I can make a good guess and make something work. But ending in two bends at a certain radius but I know what this angle is. So I'm going to go ahead and try to figure that out and look at it but otherwise I mean that's exactly what I was hoping for. It's a little lower than the top of the bar but this bar's thinner but then I'm gonna end up, I think, using some of these same little aluminum feet on the bottom of the intercooler, and then it'll actually just sit like on a plate instead of trying to hang it off of like edges and stuff. The intercooler will kind of sit on its own little table, so then it, it has tons of strength in just sitting there instead of trying to like floating the intercooler off of a couple bunks. On that side there, I put this up to this side and kind of marked a spot where it's at, marked the inside actually on both sides. It looks like this side's a little bit longer than that side, but otherwise I think I'm pretty close. Biggest thing is if one side's longer, it, the tube will sit in there kind of crooked, so I might have to put like this side back in and bend it and shave from this side until it kind of sits the way I want. But uh, a level will tell us what we need to do when we get that far. I'm gonna pop this back in the notcher, notch that out, and then we'll see what it looks like. I think the bar's looking pretty dang good. I had messed up in one little spot as I measured here to here for it not there to there for it so it's a little short it's a little it's a little loose but it's gonna work out it still holds itself there kind of um it's just there's gonna be a little bit of a gap on each bar so no big deal just uh not bad for my first bar i'll take it and uh way better than putting like some square tube or a big flat you know bracket in there or whatever actually with the little bit of play that it had i was able to kind of keep this little tighter the bottom that a little looser the top so then I was able to match the angle here to this bar there. So I make sure that everything's staying at the square with the body and chassis. For the most part, it's a unibody car. They're not perfect. So there's no exact like great spot to measure uh, like perfectly flat from. So just trying to build it off of what's already been built. Uh, like came member of this bar, everything else. So we're looking pretty dang good. It's sitting there real nice. So other than finishing that up, that bar is pretty much done. Other than these little tabs, I'm going to need to add so you guys can see that's kind of what I was thinking. This little tab, we'll do four of them around there. But I need to make sure that I don't need to rotate the intercooler at all. So I kind of need the intake to be here. I mean, I could weld it perfectly flat, but I also have the opportunity to rotate it the intercooler a little bit any direction I want if I want it to kind of hang in here a little bit at an angle different so it makes welding the intake tube up a little bit easier once we get that and figure out where that's headed a little bit of an angle could save me a pie cut if it can just angle it just a little bit boom and it hits the right angle so uh, we'll just have to see what needs to come out of the intercooler but I already marked it's about five inches out each side so then I'll end up having them like four little feet one here 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 and here 
that holds the intercooler and I think that will be plenty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to getting the radiator mounted. So finishing this up, you guys can see I got those welded on, nice and clean, aluminum welds are coming out halfway decent today. Alright with those on, I went ahead and bolted on the bracket, I using this clamp to kind of hold the radiator. Yesterday we took and set the new hood on it just to kind of mock up when I was holding that in there, I couldn't really film much because everybody's holding stuff, but I actually have about three fingers above this till I'm even close to the hood. So once I get this tacked in, this will actually lay a little bit lower, but this will be pretty good. I, as of right now, I can loosen these and rotate the radiator a little bit if I wanted to, and then I can decide if I'm gonna come off with some sort of other mount from here or whatever. Uh, my old radiator just kind of floated in there, and I think with those two, it's probably enough, especially once you put A-in hoses, hook everything on. The radiator might move a little bit, so then maybe I need to come in here and make a tab or something, I haven't decided yet, but I'll probably put some sort of third point of contact to tie it all together. But for the most part, these make it really nice and really clean, and you hardly even notice that there is a mount for the radiator. Brackets are on. Nothing's holding the radiator at the top. Three fingers above, looking pretty decent. It'll clear right there. Like I was saying, you can always rotate and mess with this unless I decide. These aren't all the way tight. So honestly, it'd probably be okay with just the bottom ones. It's whether or not I want to rely on anything else there. But I mean, it'd probably work. It'd look kind of cool because the radiator in a sense would be floating. But you got to think, this car doesn't just go down the track. It also has to drive hundreds, if not a thousand miles to the tracks throughout the drag and drive event. So anything I can do to make sure that something doesn't like rattle or break or leverage on a bracket that then breaks it so that I'm fixing it on the road or whatever. It's kind of ideal, so I'll give that some thought. Otherwise, I'm going to pop this back out and get that welded up. But I think it's looking pretty good. Otherwise, we got a mounted radiator. The things that's nice, I've been looking at both these fans. I ran, I think that's like a 12 and then a 10 or an 11 or something like that before. Slightly smaller, but I could still almost do the same run a pusher and then run a puller on the inside, depending on how close I get it. When I was mocking this up before the outlet for the radiator, was actually sitting on this bar. So it shows you how much higher it is and how much moved in. Not a lot in, but definitely a little bit higher. Now I can clear this. It was sitting on this, so I couldn't get this out if I needed to, little drain uh, and stuff like that. But otherwise, it's looking pretty dang good. So I just got done climbing back in the car. Thank goodness for these foam pieces that came with the intercooler. They worked out great for laying in there. They've been killing my back laying, but I had to weld up where I cut into like that little dash structure. So I need to grind it, clean it up, and then I can get the last one mounted. I think I'm gonna end it there. It's been a full day of work on this thing. Eh, three quarters of a day of work on this thing, but we made a lot of progress. Each day it's a little bit further, a little bit further. Hopefully the engine's here soon. I need to get turbos coming. So then once we get everything set up there, we can start working on all the engine based stuff. Uh, and then keep work on the rest car as we go as well. I hope you guys are enjoying the build video. I try to break it down as much as I can and show you guys what I'm doing as I'm doing it and uh, bring you along. New bender worked out great. Tube notch worked out great and uh, we're making some progress. So if you guys like what you're seeing and you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like if you would for me and we'll see you guys in the next video.